Hey budding herbalist, today I'm going to show you three of my favorite lemony herbs in the garden and some pros and cons to each of them. And first we're going to start off with lemongrass and lemongrass is one of our two tropical herbs that I tend to grow in the garden that impart lemony flavors to teas and other recipes. And of the lemony herbs that I grow, lemongrass, lemon verbena, and lemon balm, lemongrass is definitely the one that holds the best lemon flavor for the longest period of time. And it is a pretty pleasant flavor. If you're familiar with Southeast Asian cooking, like a lot of Thai recipes in particular, you will be very familiar with the flavor of lemongrass. It has some really bright, happy notes that it adds to flavor. Uh, it adds, it has some happy, bright notes that it adds to flavoring soups and curries and other recipes. A lot of the Thai curry bases are made with pulverized lemongrass stalks along with other spices like garlic and onions and ginger and hot peppers and all that other good stuff. And it does have medicinal value, you know, like most of our lemony herbs, you know, all the three that I'm going to be talking about today, the aromatics, whether you're inhaling them or ingesting them, they have some mood boosting, gently uplifting, kind of calming properties. And then they also, for digestion, help stimulate digestion as carminatives and also in particular are really nice for cutting the grease and helping to have a little bit of an antioxidant effect if you're eating fatty foods, which might be part of the right reason why you see lemongrass so often paired with coconut in curries and soups. You know, coconut is delicious and all, but it is pretty heavy and very high in fat, and the lemongrass will help you digest that a little bit better. But, you know, while we do get medicinal benefit from a lot of these lemony herbs, most often we're enjoying them just because they taste good, they smell good, and they're really lovely. So, as a tropical plant, this plant is not going to survive the winters in my warm zone four in New Hampshire, in New England. And so, and it really won't survive the winters in most places throughout the United States unless you live in a really warm zone. If you're in Florida, especially Southern Florida, you probably can get lemongrass to survive the winters outdoors. But here, up here, we have to treat it as a annual or you can bring it inside in a pot. And of the plants that you might do that with, bringing them in pots in the winter, lemongrass is pretty decent. It will often survive the winters. You don't have to give it too, too much attention. It will pretty much die back. And so it will look sort of dead and scrappy by the end of the season. But usually once it goes back outside in the spring, you know, once the weather starts to warm up in late spring, early summer, it will perk back up again. Sometimes I have brought my plants inside and I do like to keep it in a pot so that way as we get to you know the edge of winter, as we get into the frost season, I can bring it in really easily and extend the outdoor time frame just a little bit longer by bringing it in on those cool nights that we might have occasionally, but we might still have a lot of warm days ahead. And I could bring it inside for the winter, but lately I've just been saving my space indoors and letting it go, you know, harvesting everything at the end of the season and then planting a new seedling. At least in my garden, I really don't notice a difference in size. You know, when we get to the end of the season, whether this had grown in the pot throughout the winter or whether I had planted a young seedling in the spring, they seem to be about the same size and I get about the same amount of harvest. So I no longer really bother. I just get a new seedling for a few dollars from one of my organic growers. I get mine from Jim at, and Anne at Warner River Farm. So how do we use lemongrass? You know, harvesting lemongrass can seem a little bit funny and we get a couple different medicines out of it. So let me just kind of go in and show you. We're going to harvest from the very bottom usually and I'll pull out a stalk. If I had a warmer spot and richer soil and, you know, pots are always a little bit on the anemic side. I don't really fertilize my pots. Maybe if I did, my, my lemongrass would get even thicker. You know, some people get really thick, like the size of my thumb lemongrass stalks. Mine never get really huge, but they still taste great. So I really don't worry too, too much about it. And so you get two medicines. You have the bottom stalk here, which is very tightly woven and then you also have the top grassy fronds and what tends to be used in cooking is that bottom stalk and in cooking oftentimes the chefs will just discard the lemongrass tops because they're just they don't have quite as they're flavorful but they don't have quite as much flavor as that tightly rolled middle and they're also a little bit of a tougher consistency they'd be trickier to throw into curries you know as humans we're really not designed to eat grass so and this is indeed a grass so we would have a difficult time if we just decided to like gnaw on this our digestive system can't really handle that 
but you know when you pulverize it really really well into a paste that's one of the few times that you might actually ingest the lemongrass versus just infusing it in something and then pulling it out before you eat it so i will go ahead and i'll harvest at the end of the season i'll usually just harvest everything at the end of the season but if you did want yours to regrow you might only harvest you know maybe a third to a half of it and then let the other ones bounce back and that way it still has enough life to keep going and then if it is the end of the season you know i get a little frost warning or whatever I'm like, all right, I'm just going to pull it all in. I'll bring it in. I'll harvest all of it. And then I'll separate into two piles and I'll separate the stalks uh, from the grassy tops. And the grassy tops I will dry and I mainly use those for tea. They also make pretty nice potpourri and they dry really easily because they are so flat and loose. It's hard to dry the stalks because they are so tightly wound that they just really don't come out well as a dried herb. But we usually like to use them fresh anyway. So what I do with these bottom stalks you can use them fresh, but you can also throw them in a freezer bag. You don't even need to, you know, you can vacuum seal it if you want to, but you don't really need to. They hold up pretty well. And so I put them in a freezer bag, throw them in the freezer, and then anytime throughout the winter or even a year or two later, if I'm like, oh, I'd really like to use fresh lemongrass in a recipe, I can just go and pull out a few and make a recipe with it. And it's great. And in fact, I think I like the flavor of lemongrass stalks previously frozen more than the ones that are fresh right from the garden because the freezing breaks down the cell walls just a teeny bit and they release their flavor much better to things like seltzer or cordials. And I do tend to use this, especially in seltzer, cordials. I'll infuse the whole stalks into soup broth and make really, really yummy soup broth, really great with chicken or vegetables or fish and uh, just making a very simple tea there. And, uh, and then I will also just use them to make curry pastes and I'll freeze my curry pastes or I might just use them all up fresh when I make them. For the stalks, you know, like, or for the, uh, for the grasses, like I said, a lot of folks will just discard them, but they make great tea. And so I just dry them flat. And then once they're dry, I'll go ahead and I just kind of snip it up into smaller pieces. It's a good activity to do with, you know, nice good kitchen shears in front of a movie with a big bowl or basket or something like that. And I'll just snip it into smaller pieces once it's dry and then store that in a glass jar. And lemongrass will hold its flavor much longer than lemon balm and lemon verbena. It will hold it for up to a year, but at the end of the year, it really isn't all that impressive tasting, but it is much stronger. And as you're drying lemongrass, you might notice that the smell is kind of like Fruit Loop cereal. And I have no idea why I know what Fruit Loop cereal smells like because my mother was better than that. I never ate Fruit Loops growing up, but it definitely has that aroma when I was dry using the paper bag method in my car one year, driving around going like, what is this? It reminds me of something. And I suspect that lemongrass is used pretty frequently as a flavoring in cereals and other recipes, you know, to give that lemony flavor. It's not quite the same as lemons. There's something a little different to it but it is really quite pleasant. I love throwing lemongrass in my green teas in particular and you can also add it to any kind of other tea blend where you think lemon might flavor might benefit. So for example recently myself and a bunch of students were playing around with backyard herbal teas that had just recently been harvested from the garden including some of my lemongrass and uh, several of us just happened to make the same blend which was holy basil and lemongrass and lemon balm and it's really quite delightful and it's nice with lemon balm because as we'll get to lemon balm really does tend to lose its flavor pretty quickly so while you get some of the benefits of lemon balm as a tea usually you don't really get that much lemon flavor so adding something potent like lemongrass is nice i'd say you know, out of all of my different lemony tea herbs that I grow, lemongrass has the most, you know, easily potent and pleasant lemon flavor that you could add to a tea besides using actual lemon wedges. And, you know, lemon verbena, as we'll get to it, is nice, but it's, you know, there's a little bit of a funky flavor underneath it, whereas with lemongrass, it kind of is what it is, and it's usually pretty pleasant as long as you like that kind of flavor. Another thing that you can do throughout the season if you just want the grassy tops and you don't want to compromise the quality of getting really nice thick bases throughout the year is you can give it a little bit of a haircut and I do that uh, I did do that just recently actually you might be able to see that they're a little bit sawed off at the top and it was really just a couple weeks ago and it's already grown up quite nicely and for that I just might kind of gather a whole bunch of it together and just kind of 
give it a good haircut, kind of like you're chopping grass um, in the lawn. And it does grow back pretty quickly, just like it does in your lawn if the conditions are right. And then I can dry this. So I'll get even more of a grassy harvest. And it'll be even like fresher, greener than if I was using the same tops that have been growing all season long. So you can definitely do that throughout the season. Or if you just need a couple stalks, you can cut a few out and they will grow back up through the base, but they're not going to be quite as thick as they would if you'd let that one base grow throughout the whole season and wait till the end. I had a colleague who lives pretty close by, so she's in maybe a slightly warmer zone than I am, but not by too much. But she has a, she probably grows hers in the ground and she also has a goat farm and lambs and all that. So that she's just really awesome, rich soil. And when she brought me some of her lemongrass, I was astounded because it was like two to three times thicker than mine, but mine still tastes good. And one or two plants is plenty for you to have enough lemongrass to work with for the whole year. So you really don't need a whole lot. I do like growing mine in a pot, one, because it allows me to kind of move it around during that season end, but also because I noticed that it does get crowded out if it's in my garden with a lot of other things, and I do tend to pack my garden pretty tight with a lot of herbs, it will, if it doesn't have a chance to get really growing, it will get shaded out by other plants and not grow as vivaciously. So I like being able to put it in a pot so it can kind of be set out and have its own space to grow. And uh, you can do ceramic or glaze, but because it is a tropical plant, it doesn't want to be too, too dry. It can handle a good amount of dryness, and this one definitely does get, you know, it gets a little bit of drip irrigation, but it's in a drier section of the yard in general. It's definitely in one of the hottest sections of my yard, which as a tropical plant, it will appreciate. But you know, if it had a little bit of moisture, it might be even happier and might even make slightly thicker bases, but it's all good. So this is a fun plant to grow in the garden, play around with those recipes. Don't forget to use it. You know, a lot of times we grow these kinds of things and then we forget that they're there and we forget to make all these really fun ethnic inspired dishes that are really, really delicious, but might not be part of your normal repertoire. So play around with that and we'll move on to our next lemony herb. So here we have another real favorite of mine in the garden for a lemony flavor, and that is lemon verbena. And just like inhaling lemon verbena when you go by, of all the lemony herbs, I think this actually has the most pleasant aroma when you're just inhaling it. It is like lemon goodness from you know the heavens it is just really really quite delightful a little bit reminiscent of lemon cake and most often i tend to use this in my green tea or if i'm trying to avoid using caffeinated teas i might use it in a really light tea like an oat straw tea or a uh, or I might use it in another tea that has a green tea like flavor, like ladies mantle, but really, really quite delightful. It's also classically used in baked goods. Sometimes you'll throw it at the bottom of the pan. I haven't personally done this because I don't do a lot of baked goods, but you can put it at the bottom of a pan before you put vanilla or yellow cake batter in, and then you'll get this little bit, you know, it'll just sit on the top because these are kind of tough to eat so that way you can pull them off at the end but they'll end up being at the very base of that and you get this nice lemony aroma that infuses throughout the cake or another kind of classic culinary recipe with this is to just pack it with white sugar or organic sugar and just pack it fresh and eventually the herb will dry out in the sugar base but it will infuse the sugar with that lemon verbena flavor and so you can really enjoy that then throwing that in your tea or sprinkling it onto your baked goods or however you want to use your sugar. I don't personally use them that way. I personally mainly use it as tea and I mainly use it fresh because it is so much more flavorful when it's fresh. It will hold on to its flavor okay dry. Usually within about six months it's lost its flavor but it will hold on to it longer than say lemon balm will but not quite as long as the lemongrass will. So I do use it dry in the later season and in fact I am going to be harvesting most of this soon because we are going to be having some cold nights and I'm always a little bit nervous about frost this time of year and I want to make sure that I have plenty of this to last me throughout the winter until next season. And uh, But mostly I use it fresh and I'll just go in and I'll grab a sprig of it and I might just kind of like give it a little, a good, a good little slap or two to release the flavors. And that's a trick I learned from Emily Han, who does some really lovely wildcrafted and herbal cocktails. And then I'll throw it in my tea as it's steeping, whether it's green tea, black tea, or one of my other kind of mild flavored herbal teas. And it's really delicious that way. And the other way that I've used it recently is I've combined it with, I've got my Thai basil around here too. And while I'm cooking with my Thai basil and my lemongrass and I'm making, you know, Southeast Asian inspired 
inspired dishes, I will make a Thai basil cocktail or a Thai basil mocktail. And I will do that with usually some lemon juice and some simple syrup. And maybe I'll throw gin or vodka into it, but it's really quite nice on its own without any liquor at all. And then along with that, I will take some lemon verbena and I'll, you know, I'll infuse them a little bit this way and throw them in. And then I'll also throw them into the shaker and shake them up and then strain them out into the drink. And it's just really nice. I've made some popsicles with that same basic recipe. When I make the drink, I'll usually add some bubbly water to it to just kind of fill it out and mellow out because it's a pretty strong flavor, but it's really quite delicious and very refreshing. It would be a nice, you know, little riff on lemonade that's a little fancier, a little herbal, but not that hard to make that you could make in the summertime to enjoy your alongside your tropical inspired recipes. So those are some of the few ways I use it. It does have some uplifting flavors as well. And if I'm using it dry, a lot of times I will leave the leaves whole. You can crunch them up like and garble them like you would with a lot of other cut and sifted herbs, but I think they hold on to their lemon flavor just a little bit longer when they're left in their whole state. And it's also just kind of nice to see them unfurl in, your, unfurl in your teas and to enjoy them and just get a little bit of a reminder of this plant that you enjoyed in summertime. Another fun way to use it in tea blends and also in seltzers and things is if you pair it with some vanilla, either a little bit of snip vanilla bean or since vanilla bean has gotten so expensive, sometimes just adding a little bit of vanilla extract to that. I actually keep some vanilla extract in a dropper bottle so I can easily add squirts of it to seltzer and teas and other recipes and I go through a lot of vanilla that way. And when you combine vanilla with your lemon verbena, it really amplifies that lemon cake flavor that it has. And, you know, when you're having a lot of lemon verbena, especially if it's the primary herb in the recipe or the only, you know, real strong flavor in that recipe, there's this kind of green, slightly bitter, a little bit funny undertone to it that's not quite as pleasant as the smell that you get when you release it. So adding vanilla seems to kind of lift up that lovely lemoniness and soften some of the harsher undertones. The other thing that you can do is if you use cooler water, like not quite boiling water, that also tends to amplify a little bit more of the aromatics and a little bit less of the tannins and the slightly more bitter uh, and astringent and stronger green undertones of the lemon verbena. But you know, it's just such great aromatherapy to inhale as you're walking around the garden and to throw into recipes highly recommend growing it. Usually one or two plants will give you a pretty good amount. I've been harvesting, you know, a sprig of this almost every single day throughout the season, but I haven't really gone in and done a thorough harvest yet, so I'll be doing that soon. And I'll just pinch it off like I did. You'll notice that, let me grab a fresher sprig that's a little less wilted, but you will notice, ooh, this one's a special one too, that it has whorled leaves. And so with those whorled leaves, this one actually has four, usually it's three, um, but this particular one all has four. Let's see if I can find a three for. So, you know, usually it has three leaves in the whorl of leaves. And if you pinch above that, it will grow out with three new branches and you might be able to see that that's actually happening throughout the garden where I've pinched off before. I might have had one stem and then I pinch off and then I have three new stems of plants growing. Or, you know, in this one here that was special and has four, I'll get four stems. So oftentimes I'll pick and choose if I have the choice between like one that has two leaves opposite each other versus one that has three leaves. I'll choose the one that has three leaves to harvest in front of so that I can encourage even bigger future growth so that I have more plant material to work with going forward. You don't normally see, at least I don't normally see four like I just happen to pick. It's usually three. So that's a little bit about lemon verbena, fun little tropical plant to grow in the garden. Much like your lemongrass, it wants to be warm. This one does like to have a little bit more moisture. It wants to have rich soil. This plant wants to be in the tropics. It would be probably thrilled to be in some place like Florida over some place like New Hampshire or New England. It will not survive the frosts. So you're gonna to wanna to either harvest it or bring it indoors. I personally don't bother to bring this indoors. It, it will sort of, in a sense, look that it is deciduous. So even if it's alive, it'll drop all its leaves and look like nothing super exciting 
exciting indoors. But a lot of times it does die when you bring it indoors and I just don't have time to deal with things like that. So I just plant a new plant or two every year and that does just fine. And I get plenty of medicine and plenty of tea ingredients from that. So feel free if you're someone who really likes to play around with indoor plants, you're welcome to try planting it in a pot and bringing it indoors, but I don't feel like it's necessary. So let's move on to our last lemon herb. So last we have lemon balm, and this is a plant that a lot of people actually already grow in their garden. It is a perennial, so one of the big perks of lemon balm is it's usually pretty hardy and will grow throughout, the, you know, it'll stay, survive the winter, and you'll have it come back year to year, or maybe you have a year without a lot of snow cover and it does die off, but then it usually self seeds all over the place. So it's a plant that a lot of people have in the garden and it can really take over. Mine has taken over quite a bit, but in a good way. And I use this a lot for medicine and I have a whole nother video on nervines and visiting a couple different nervines in the garden. And in that I talk about lemon balm a lot more at length and particularly into all the various medicinal uses. Today in this video, I really just want to focus on its flavor. And so lemon balm does have a really nice lemon flavor. It's kind of like lemon pledge so compared to lemongrass and lemon verbena it's not quite as nice and fun of a flavor but it is nice and it does also have some pretty strong tannic undertones it's relatively high in tannins as plants go so you do get a little bit of that kind of green tea black tea kind of uh, sensation in your mouth from it because of those astringent tannins and one of the downsides to lemon balm is even though it smells so aromatic when you grow it and inhale it, it, it really doesn't have very, very much essential oil. It just happens to be very strong and it dissipates very, very quickly. And so once you dry it, it will only maintain its flavor for a very short period of time. And you have to be really careful drying it to maintain that. Usually I'll do screens at a relatively low temp with a fan, dry, dry temp is really ideal dry humidity and then if you need to you can crisp it up a little bit in the dehydrator or in the car just before you garble it but if you can possibly be in a time period where the air is dry enough for it to dry 100 percent on its own you'll retain the flavor even better than if you had to crisp it up with a little bit of heat but you don't want it to mold because it is a juicy plant so there's a little bit of dance there if you pack too much into a brown paper bag to dry it or into a screen to dry it it will start to blacken if you expose it to too much humidity or too much heat or any of those things, it will also blacken as it dries and it won't be quite as nice of a quality. I often find that my late season harvests of lemon balm are the best tasting of all the ones I do throughout the year. I think the, the aromatics actually intensify a little bit, possibly because less of it cooks off in the heat of the day. And then it's also usually drier towards the end of the season, so it's easier to dry things 100% at air temp, at least in my ecosystem, that's usually pretty humid. So really lovely plant. Mostly I use it fresh if I'm going for the fresh lemony flavor and I will put it into, a, it's tender. It's a lot more tender than the other two. So it's easier to actually eat in a recipe than lemongrass or lemon verbena would be. And so I might throw it into cocktails. I might throw it into seltzer. I might throw it into infused, you know, cold waters, especially with holy basil. It's really lovely like that. And I I might slice it up thin and throw it in at the very end of cooking or just before serving. If I'm making something with Southeast Asian flavors and I want to add a little bit of lemoniness, it's a nice one to potentially throw into your wrapper if you're going to be making a fresh spring roll, but it does blacken really easily. So that's one of the downsides to it. As soon as you, you know, really compress it or do anything to it, it starts to blacken. So it's something that you generally need to use and eat very quickly if you're going to work with it that way. A lot of times I will just take a small sprig and throw it into my tea, much like I was talking about doing with lemon verbena. And that's also really nice. It's a slightly different lemon flavor, but it is one I really enjoy. And lemon balm, not only will it survive the winters, but it's one of the herbs that usually kind of gets a second wind in fall. So I have harvested lemon balm as late as October and November. As long as there's not snow on the ground, a lot of times it's kind of getting a little bit of a regrowth and you could cut it back if you wanted and that will also stimulate regrowth. But even if you let it flower, a lot of times you'll find that those flowers just kind of die off and you get some new growth in the fall. So it does have a much longer season. It's among the first herbs to come up in spring as well. So, you know, while you might still be a month or two away from having a frost free time period to plant all your more tender herbs, you could still, you could already be getting fresh lemony flavor from something like lemon balm in the garden.
Once it's dry, like I said, it loses its flavor pretty quickly. If you have a recipe that you want to work with dry because you don't want it to go bad, you know, like an herb infused oil for topical use or an herb infused glycerite, you know, if you use the fresh plant material, it's so juicy, it might be more apt to get funky and dry will be less apt to get funky because you don't have that moisture, but you lose all the aromatics. So in those cases, the best way to work with it would be to dry it really carefully. And then instead of like garbling it and holding it onto it for a while, garbling is that process where you're stripping the leaves off the stems and crunching it up into smaller pieces. Instead of doing that and storing it, just do that right into your recipe and crumple it up and throw it right into your recipe right away. And if you do it, you know, right after the herb is thoroughly dry, or if maybe you wilt it most of the way and then make the recipe, you'll retain most of the aromatics and you'll also get rid of most or all of the moisture that might contribute to some of those more finicky recipes going bad. So those are some fun ways you can play with it. But even if you left it around for a couple weeks and then you decided to go make some aromatic recipe with it, you would notice that would have lost a lot of its lemony flavor. Even still, stuff, you know, you can use lemon balm dried in recipes and teas after it's lost its lemony flavor, while it does lose some of its pro properties and it won't be quite as potent as a fresh lemon balm, it's still useful. It still retains a lot of its properties for nerving. And as a flavor herb, I think of it more as background flavor at that point. It goes really nice alongside more flavorful herbs and just kind of carries them versus really imparting a whole lot of flavor of its own. You get that little bit of the tannin mouthfeel from it and then just kind of a bland, pleasant greenness to it. And so it is great to throw in with your dried lemongrass and your dried verbena, lemon verbena to make a lemony tea, even though the lemon balm might not impart that much flavor at that point, it's just gonna hold the other recipe ingredients quite nicely. Or you can throw it into nutritive teas or sleep teas or all these things. So I do use it a lot in tea dry, even though you do lose most, if not all of those aromatics. But it's a great herb to grow in the garden. Definitely check out that Nervine video to learn all of the, or at least many of the many, many wonderful things you can use lemon balm for. But like the other two that I already mentioned, it will have those uplifting aromatics when you get it in its aromatic form. It's also really nice for boosting digestion and for cutting the grease. So it is great to use in combination with those other herbs for recipes if you'd like. So those are three lemony herbs you can grow in the garden. One you probably already grow, and then two you might be considering growing but not quite sure what to do with and so hopefully now you know how to play around with them and make really lovely teas and all three of these herbs are almost useless to get in the commercial industry because they have such a short time span where they retain their quality so it's pretty much not worth buying dried lemongrass or dried lemon verbena in the international herb market and I really prefer not to get my lemon balm from the international herb market either if I do want to get more dried lemon balm than I got around to harvesting myself then I'll go and get it direct from a local farm so someplace like Foster Farm Botanicals or Zach Woods Herb Farm or many you know most of your local United States organic herb farms are gonna grow lemon balm because it's such a delightful herb and it's so easy to grow and the quality you'll get from them as a dried herb is going to be much better than what you get on the international big bulk supplier herb market so that's something to keep in mind but it's so easy to grow you can also grow it yourself and easily supply yourself with plenty of medicine for the whole year just based out on what you can get out of your garden so have fun playing with your herbs and happy herbal adventures